Hello. I had this whole big like well like intro and then I saw you drumming on the in the background there mm -hmm. and I just I completely lost it. <laughs> uh hey, how about that? That's exactly what we drew, uh, drew up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just just <laughs> like they did it, just like they drew it up. Uh hello. Yeah, I don't even know where where to start. It was a uh game where at halftime some people may or may not have checked out of. Uh, I did turn the golf tournament on. I kept the Illinois game on this TV, but I started watching a little bit more of the golf tournament that I uh, than I was previously. Um, and then things happened. <laughs> and let's talk about some of those things. Illinois uh, somehow, after a fifteen point second half def second half deficit, uh, comes back and beats Nebraska ninety eight eighty seven in the semifinals. Um, they were up at fifteen by fifteen at one point, so there was a thirty point swing. Um, I think it was a fifty two twenty two at one point. They were outscoring uh, Nebraska, but yeah, Illinois wins by eleven. Uh, I, I I can't even put my my thoughts together at the moment. Uh, Terrence Shannon drops a forty piece, a Big Ten tournament single game record forty piece. Uh, Thirteen of those from the free free throw line. Uh, five of nine from the three and eleven of twenty-two from the field. Um, doesn't do a whole lot else, but when you're putting up forty, <laughs> you don't really need to. Two rebounds and one assist. Um, but we'll talk about stats here in a little bit. I think that is the story: is Terrence Shannon Jr. and uh, yeah. So initial thoughts, uh, Logan. How uh, how'd you feel with five? How'd you feel two minutes into the second half, and how'd you feel with two minutes left in the game? Well, thanks for asking, Craig. I'd love to tell you. Um, I did not feel well at halftime. Uh, I did not feel well for most of the first half. Um, similar to yesterday. Um, yesterday, I told you that I was more annoyed than I was frustrated. Today, I was more frustrated than I was annoyed. Um, listen, this is a good Nebraska team. This is the best Nebraska team in maybe my entire lifetime. Hello, Mom. Um, hey, Lennox. Hey, Lennox. I don't, I don't know if Lennox <laughs> is there, but hey, Lennox. Um, yeah, this is the best Nebraska team probably in my entire life. Um, and they're a really good shooting team. Like like Illinois, like they can light it up from, from, from deep. Uh, Illinois' defense in the first half was abysmal. Illinois' energy in the first half was abysmal. Um, I, like you, kind of tuned out. Um, just at the start of the second half, I was watching other things, focusing on other things. This was kind of just on in the background and I just kept looking over every, you know, 30 seconds just to kind of see what was going on. Um, and they just kept chipping away and, uh, listen, man, uh, credit to Taryn Shannon, like just like yesterday, you needed every single one of his points. Uh, he scored what? 28 yesterday and 40 today. Um, unreal. And you'd literally need all of it because the rest of the team um, for most of this game was non-existent mm -hmm. uh, offensively, defensively, especially in the first half. The first half was abysmal. This was possibly, possibly the worst half of basketball and the best half of basketball. This team has played all season long. I in thought the one same game. thing. In one I thought game. the same thing. I Crazy. thought the same thing, but I don't think I fully agree because the offense did put up 40 in the first half. That's true. So defensively, true. it might have been the That's first, true. the worst half of basketball this season. Terrence Shannon uh, put up 40 points in the or nearly put up 40 points in the first half. The yeah, first half can. stats. Um Terrence Shannon, 18 points. Yeah. Marcus Damask 10. Yeah. And that was that was it. Luke Goody had six. Like yeah, they put up 40 points in the first half, but it was it was nearly all Terrence. So, yeah, like, yes, they did put up 40 points in the first half. Um, so credit there. You know, I just want to – this is – people talk all the time about how, oh, like, you know, Illinois' defense can't be that good. You gave up 87 points in Nebraska. Like, but they scored 98. Like, mm -hmm. You're not going to win by 30 points. That, that's just that's just not how how it works. So like, I know that's not the argument we're having for today's game, but it's just kind of one of those things. Uh, but obviously, second half came around, and I was a much happier boy. So uh, happy to be here. That's my thoughts. Good night. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I echo it a lot. Um, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, my thing at halftime was, you know, this is the Big Ten semifinal to go to the championship, and there was just no effort, no energy, no heart. Like, if, if you can't get up for this type of game, you're not going to be able to get up and play for, for anything. Uh, let alone next week when it means theoretically more on fr- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Like, this is the same, you know? Like, you have a chance to win a trophy today and tomorrow, and you come out and you just – you're la- lollygagging on defense. You're not guarding anybody. Now, yes, we've talked about it on here before, <coughs> and I f- have the same feelings every game. It just seems like teams that – are playing against Illinois just seem to throw stuff at the basket and it goes in more often than against anyone else. I feel like there was some of that in the first half, but a lot of those were open looks that they were just lazy on the screens. They were getting lost on defense. Um, And let's see, I tweeted about the effort at 515 and 30 minutes later at 545, it was like a one possession game. So Kudos to, I don't know if it was Brad, I don't know if it was Coleman or Terrence or someone in the locker room. Um, There was that timeout. After they got it to 15, Brad took a timeout. Someone had to get their ass chewed out in that timeout. But after that, it was a different basketball team. And credit to the entire staff, the entire team for turning it around. And honestly, this wasn't even a game. Illinois, had they got like a seven-point lead with a – six minutes left. Like it was like snap of a finger and we were back. I will. I thought about doing this during the game. Oh, what's that? I've taken a gambling break. I haven't. Oh, oh. I haven't. Seems like a weird um, time for that, Craig. Well, it's come. It's starting back up next week, mm, <laughs> but, of course, of course. but I was just, I'd been taking a break for the last, probably about mm, three weeks to a month. I haven't really paid attention, but Illinois got down about, 15 they got down 15 and they they put a couple buckets together and got it to about 10 i was like you know what i wonder what the money line on illinois is right now it was 57 47 and i could have got it at plus 275 i was like huh do i want to and i didn't because i was like yeah there's i mean nebraska case is gonna heat up they're gonna they're gonna it, illinois not gonna win this game and they did so uh regretting that but I didn't expect this to happen. <laughs> I did not expect this to happen. I Which part? Because I don't think I expected any of it. I mean, I shouldn't be shocked at the way the game started and the way the first half went after yesterday because, yes, they got the win yesterday, but, like, that, was a, that wasn't a great basketball game for Illinois. So, like, I guess I shouldn't be shocked by how this game started. Um and then I did not expect the second half to go like it did. I mean, this is this is a crazy basketball game from an Illinois standpoint. Um, yeah. Just the yeah. difference. I mean, just look at the the difference in the the score by period. First half, Nebraska fifty one forty. That was the halftime score fifty one to forty. Second half, Illinois outscored Nebraska fifty eight to thirty six. It was just it was unreal. Uh, it was a totally different team that came out in the second half. So, yes, whoever made the halftime speech, Coleman, Terrence, Brad, John Sanderson, Jason Hayward, I don't care. Whoever whoever made Jason the speech, <laughs> whoever made the speech, man, uh, it worked. It worked. So, yeah, uh, kudos, kudos to them because they needed it. They got it. And uh, now we live to play on Sunday, which, yeah. You know, you, you come in as the two seed. You have to think that that's likely. Uh, but we saw what happened earlier in a thriller uh, between Purdue and Wisconsin, that it's not necessarily how it always goes. So uh, props to this to this team for battling back in the second half and, and correcting whatever mistakes or mental errors, mental drawbacks, things were keeping them from doing what they needed to do because they fixed it. Yep. Uh, let's run through the stats. We already told you, uh, Terrence, 40-piece. Uh, nothing much else from him um, in the stat sheet, but 40 points. Obviously, career high and Big Ten tournament single game high. Marcus Damascus, 16 points, all around good game for him. 16 points, 7 rebounds, 8 assists for Marcus tonight. Much better, much better than yesterday. Quincy Garrier, 13 points, 2 boards. Luke Goody, 12 points. 12 big points and 6 big rebounds. Uh, uh, 
overall yeah. good game from Luke Goody. He was four of nine from three. All all twelve of his points from were from behind the arc. And then only two others in the scoring book: Coleman Hawkins with nine, Ty Rogers with eight, and Ty had thirteen rebounds and four assists. So good game from them. Bench did not go very deep tonight. Um, Justin Harmon played nine point nine minutes. Uh, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn played four minutes. Nico Moretti played one minute. And the hero from yesterday, Dane Danger, putting up a massive double double yesterday. Oh, I don't think it was a double double. Yeah, but it was. a massive nineteen points yesterday. Or close, I guess. Yeah. Zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists in six minutes. Didn't see the floor in the second half. I would say explain that to me, but I don't think it needs explaining. Um, matchup wasn't great yeah, for, I think for Dane today. I think that's the answer. Uh, I mean, at the ha- at halftime, I questioned it because, yes, there's cer- certainly a matchup thing, um, but – you needed something. So like, why not try him out there more than six minutes? Like he was literally your second best player yesterday. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was totally a matchup thing. Um, they, uh, rank mast is a perimeter player and he's their post player. So like, you know, you're just going to, that's just going to happen in situations like this, but, uh, didn't need Dane today. Maybe you need Dane tomorrow. You just never know when yeah. it's going to be a Dane game. Yeah. Um, shooting wise, oh, would you look at that? As hot as Nebraska started, both teams shot 32 of 69 from the field. Nice. The exact same, exact same from the field. Nice. Illinois, though, 13 of 35 from three. Nebraska was eight of 27. Um, free throws, uh, Illinois was 21 of 26, which was good. Nebraska is thir- or 15 of 21. Rebounds, Illinois out rebounded them by six, 42, 36. Uh, second chance points, Illinois was was better, seventeen to nine. Points in the paint, very similar, forty to thirty six. So, um, yeah, Nebraska led for twenty nine of the forty minutes. Illinois led for eight minutes and fifty four seconds. So those are the stats. Uh, we like to look at plus minus. Everyone except for all five starters were plus double digits in plus minus. Dre Gibbs Lawhorn was minus one. Luke Goody was minus three. Dane Danger was minus five. There you go. Matchup was not great. Nico Moretti was minus two. Um, but all this, all five starters were plus double digits uh, at minimum today. Um, we didn't do this yesterday. We'll just start with it. Do you have an everyday guy of the game? Yes, Luke Goody. Yeah, it's a good Luke one. Goody. I'm going to skip past the the 40 piece. Um, this is one of the best games we've seen out of Luke Goody. Uh, yep. And I have been a little concerned about Luke Goody from a uh, short-term and long-term um, vantage point uh, the past few weeks. Um, I, felt, I felt like on numerous occasions, and we've talked about it several times on this show, that if Luke's not hitting threes, um, he doesn't provide much. Uh, he'll give you some hustle moments. He'll get you some rebounds. Um, he'll go after some loose balls, but defensively, he's usually a liability. Um, he, he matchup wise, he just doesn't really fit out there. Um, but tonight, tonight it, it worked. Uh, a nice night for Luke. Twelve points, four for nine from three. As you talked about, six rebounds, a couple of assists. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously he wasn't the leading scorer that that belonged to the to you know the MVP, but. Um, I, just because we haven't really seen it in a while, I, I'll definitely go Luke Goody. Yeah, I think that's the that's the obvious answer. I'll go Marcus as well. Give him some love. He nearly had a triple double. Um, I'm not on the scoring sheet right now, but was it eighteen seven and eight? Sixteen right? seven, sixteen seven and eight. And eight. Yeah, so yeah. almost a triple double for him. Um, I was looking at the run tracker. Uh, Nebraska got their fifteen point lead with. Uh, two and two minutes and one second into the um second half, Illinois got their fifteen point lead with two minutes. No, with night with one. I'm sorry, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> Nebraska got their fifteen point lead one minute into the second half. Illinois got their fifteen point lead with two minutes left in the game. So a seventeen minute stretch, Illinois went on a fifty to twenty run. 
to take the lead by 15. When did they grab the lead? What was Illinois' first lead? Do you remember? Well, they led it. They led 10-8. Um, well, I mean, in, of the second half. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember what the score was at that moment, but I remember when that graphic. Luke Goody's three, so a thirty-one to fifteen run over a ten and a half minute span to take the lead. So, yeah, fifty to twenty over a seventeen minute span is what got Illinois out to the fifteen point lead. Uh, okay, uh, some chat things here. Did you see my tweet? Probably not. Um, right as the game was ending. Um. Uh, Terrence I, Shannon was shooting one of his free throws. No, I and saw your the, uh, field of CA tweet, but no. The ad on the basket stanchion was Orange Crush. <laughs> <laughs> so I know Michael already said he's not listening. He's like our most loyal viewer and listener, and he drinks an Orange Crush for every game. So I hope he goes back and watches this because I tweeted out a picture, and uh, he will love it. I and didn't that, even – That was the ad on the That didn't even stanchion. like – that didn't even – I didn't even put two and two together, but there has – Crush has been the advertisement banner on the scorer's bench. Oh, this I whole didn't tournament. notice that. It's been like – I don't know if it's there the whole time, but it's there a lot. It's purple and orange. Hmm. Like it's it's there. Um, hmm. But yeah, I didn't catch that that moment. But yeah, it's it's been – and I didn't put that together, the whole Orange Crush thing. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. that's been there in the mix. Uh, what else we okay. got? I've got them starred like I found okay, out I could do yesterday. So I'm going back that. to the beginning. So um, just hang with me here. These are comments from like 15 minutes ago. But um, from Bootzilla, I feel like our defense wasn't bad in the first half. Nebraska just made everything. Agreed? Uh, to an it's extent. A little bit of both. A little yeah. bit of both. Nebraska yeah. did hit everything, and that's that's what this team does. This is a team that can shoot lights out. Um, and it wasn't even Tomonaga. <laughs> it was, it was other, it was rank mass. mass. It was, mass. it was, yeah. yeah, it was, um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was both. I, I don't think the defense was that bad, um, as bad as they've been at times, but, um, you probably, I would have liked to seen a little bit more. I think it was more the effort. I, I just don't yeah, think it's, the effort totally, was totally, totally there. I yeah. just, and I felt the same way yesterday. This team, for some reason, it, Granted, now they've won both these games, so like I don't know why I'm bitchy, but it, like it just feels like it just feels like they left some of that energy in Champagne. Yeah, same like, for tomorrow. Again, like whatever we we've we've won both games. We're playing for the Big Ten championship game tomorrow, but like yeah, I don't know. It just it's felt like for you know they played forty or eighty minutes of basketball. It's felt like for sixty of it, 40, 50, 60 of it, like it's been half ass effort. So it's more that than it was necessarily the defense specifically. Yeah, I texted the guys at halftime because uh, from like, I feel like right around Bragging Rights, right before Bragging Rights is when Illinois really found their stride. And we just kept like, Pat McAfee has like patented this this phrase or this word, but dogs. Like, I kept calling this Illinois team just full of dogs. Justin Harmon's a dog. Terrence Shannon's a dog. It's like, where did these dogs that we were talking about two months ago, where did they go? Yeah. Cause they like, I feel like they're just walking through the motions right half the time. And that's when they get into holes like they did today. So they just got to come out ready to play. Cause when they're ready to play second half, you, you can see what you see what they can do. And you just, so. you just don't know what matchups you're going to get starting next week. Like, yeah, you never, like, you don't know, you could get a, a noon game on Friday and you know, you just have to be ready. Like you just have yeah. to come out with, energy um as soon as the ball tips like you just have to be there and i just don't feel like the team has done that each of these two games in minneapolis so yeah um but whatever they they won both of them so i should stop bitching from blake what happened to justin Harmon though his downfall has been so odd know. over the last three weeks i feel like we need him come tourney time even if it's just a good 10 minutes yeah i did they say yesterday he was his first point in like three games could be. He's just like not scoring. He was 0 of 1 today with one foul and he only played six minutes. He he's been he's been not bad. He's been awful. Yeah. Like non existent. Can't guard a soul. Um and offensively, he's like scared to shoot and hasn't made a three in weeks. Yeah. I'll go to his I'll go to his profile while you talk. Yeah, he uh he's seemingly fallen off a cliff. Uh, and, and the comment I made on Twitter in the first half was that I, I don't really know who I wanted to see out on the court because I wasn't sure in yeah for most of that half who I could trust. Like other than Terrence, um, Marcus was getting some points. So like, okay, um, Coleman's not done a lot. 
Uh, Justin Harmon hasn't done provided much. You know, I would love to see more Dane, but yes, this was a nightmarish or was a matchup issue for him. Um, Quincy Garrier is is has become one of the most streaky players on this team. Um, some nights he's going to put up double figures like he does tonight, and other nights he's going to be a lost cause out there. Um, and I don't know for being a such a decent three point shooter, he's his free throw. Uh, game is is not where I'd love to see it. No, um, no. Same with Luke Goody. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, Justin has kind of fallen off a cliff. So, so you need him to be one of the experienced guys. This is why he came here. I, I know he does yeah. not have tournament experience, but he's a fifth year dude who played yeah. at a high level at a mid major. Like this is the time for you to shine, buddy. Like figure it out. He made two free throws yesterday. Those were his first points since Wisconsin. At Wisconsin, uh, he, he scored 10 points, four free throws, um, three made buckets. He has not made a three-pointer since Maryland. Okay. He is 0 of 0 for 6. Did he shoot one tonight? No. He's 0 for his last six from three. So he's not taking a lot, um, but he hasn't made a three since Maryland. Um, he scored 12 against Iowa. 10 against Wisconsin, 6 against Minnesota. But other than that, he hasn't done a whole lot. But, yeah, he's fallen off a cliff. And not just offensively. We're talking offensive stats here, but defensively too. He He's really not doing much on that end. And he had a bad turnover tonight late in the game. Yep. They cut it to 7, I think. Um, they might have missed the free throw, but uh, trying to break the press with under a minute left, and he turned the ball over trying to break it. So, okay, what else? What's next? Uh, our buddy Mark. Um, what's up Mark's got Mark's got some decent analysis on here uh notice the fine line between guarding and playing defense we do a good job of guarding but when we start harassing people with our link that is playing defense that is what Mike Latula mentioned and pointed out a couple weeks ago in his breakdown with Jeremy Warner plug for them because they do a great job if you want to get like in depth with schemes and stuff uh Latula's very very basketball smart he showed clips of the Marquette game early in the year (coughs) And that's exactly what Illinois was doing. They were using the length in your grill, guarding hard, which I don't think they do anymore. Yeah. Even in the comeback, I don't feel like I was seeing a bunch of like in your grill, like you're not getting around us. They were just forcing bad shots. Yeah. So I still didn't see it today, but they played better. Um, but what Mark's talking about is how this team got so high in the Ken Palm defensive analytics early in the season because they were yeah. just guarding their asses off. And and that's the that was one of the strengths of this team going into the season. It was was the length. We've talked yeah. about it a lot. They don't have the point guard. They don't have the true five. But they they are long. They're all six six to six ten. Like they sh- that's how you should play defense in those situations. And for some reason, you're right. They've gotten away from it. Uh, Ken Palm has not updated yet, but as of right now, seventy third in defensive analytics. Kai Cresswell, as frustrating as this game was, we're closing out games now. And then he touches on Harmon, which we already touched on. Yeah, that's a good sign we talked about yesterday, so we don't need to touch a lot on today. But this is a game, this is a kind of game that Illinois had not been in prior to this week. Um, Someone in the chat yesterday said something about the Indiana game was a comeback and the Iowa game at home maybe was a comeback. I don't, like I said, I'm terrible about remembering specific games, but um, yeah, these this is these last two days are a good test and a good sign um, for Illinois. Paul chiming in here is it bothering anyone else that Hawkins seems reluctant to take threes anymore? Um, I believe he took like five yesterday. He was one of seven today, so he's taking them. He's just not making them at the clip that he was uh, for a month stretch uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, breaking non-Illinois news: Justin Fields to the Steelers. No, um, really. Yeah, Justin Fields to the Steelers for 20, 2025 sixth round pick that goes to the fourth round to a fourth round pick based on play time. Wow! So it's Caleb Fe- or Caleb Williams. They're yeah. that's they made their decision. Wow. Who Carry wants on. my Justin Fields jersey? <laughs> I have a Justin Fields jersey I bought six months ago. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, Coleman struggling from three. He was one of seven today. O of one yesterday. O of one 
at Iowa, 0 for 1 versus Purdue, 1 for 1 against at Wisconsin. So, yeah, he's only taken – this is the first time he's taken multiple threes in the last five games. So, yeah, you're right, Paul. He wasn't taking them, um, and he's definitely not making them, which is a concern, uh, is a bit of a concern. I'm not going to lie. Anything on that? Uh, no. Um, I, I don't know what – I just – I don't want to try to attempt to get in the mind of, of a 22-year-old. I, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm caught up now. Let me see if we've got anything else. Um, I think my I think my dad's mentioned. entire fantasy football league is watching right now. Um, oh, I'm just okay. getting all sorts of messages. <laughs> um, so shout out fantasy Oakwood fantasy football league. I don't know why you're all watching this, uh, but uh, you know, happy to have you. Glad you're here. Uh, yes, that's that is the comment. Those are the type of things, and we talked about it earlier. But this is these are the type of games that you need to go through. You need to experience these kind of games um, as you get get into these situations. Greatest Illini comeback since the Arizona game. Uh, I mean, it, it might be. It might be. I don't know if... It's very possible. Uh, it's very possible. I feel like... Wasn't the Chattanooga game a couple of years ago? Didn't we come back in that one? In the tournament, could have and been. Coleman got the block. I could be wrong on that, but like I've said before, I'm terrible at remembering specific games. Um, I mean, we can talk about this now, or we can save it. Uh, Purdue lost, so it's Illinois Wisconsin. Yep. Would you have per- preferred it been Purdue no. or Wisconsin? No, <laughs> no, not Wisconsin. at all. <laughs> no. no. Uh, I mean, the only argument that I can. The only legitimate argument you can make for wanting Purdue is the whole still need the marquee win thing. Uh, but at this point, I don't think it matters. I think Illinois, yeah. as of right now, has locked himself into a three seed. I think that has happened. I do not think the outcome of tomorrow matters. I don't think they'll go higher any higher than a three. Um, so, no, at this point, give me Wisconsin. Let me take the team we've already beat this year as opposed to. Yeah. I know you've said it. That Purdue isn't as good as Illinois or whatever bullshit you were spewing a week ago to piss off the Purdue fans. Um, but uh, but no, I'd I, much rather I mean, see if Wisconsin Illinois tomorrow, thank you. I would have taken Illinois tomorrow. I mean, I think they're the better team. I think okay. on a neutral court, no. uh, Illinois Craig, beats Purdue. Craig, the Purdue fans aren't here. You don't have to rile anybody up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just the Illinois fans now. Like I had, they know thought- you're they know you're full of shit. I have oh, everyone does now. It's not hard to find. Uh, I had the same thought as Kai. I don't know what gets into Quincy, but he keeps channeling his inner MJ and trying to take. Off I thought the same life. thing. <laughs> He's taken off so far. Like I like even if there's, I, I I don't know how he can successfully complete that dunk. He can't. Like he just keeps doing it, and he it lucks out sometimes and draws a foul or whatever. Like the poor whoever it was kid. Um, just stepped right there in front of him and had to take the foul. But like, yes, he keeps doing that. Like, I guess maybe one day he'll actually complete that dunk, but uh, he, he can certainly oh, he, get up there. He's thrown down some monsters. Oh, no, year. I know. I know. But from there, from the free throw line, yeah. come on. Come on, man. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Rod Nell with a good point. I think Coleman's going to be a key this March. Uh, I mean, it is March. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I know you, you're you on the Damask X Factor. We've seen what he is, so I'm, I'm changing your thoughts. I think from here on out, Coleman Hawkins is, is the most important player to this roster. That's fair. I, I can see that. Um, you need at least two of them to show up every game. Um, yeah. however they're going to do it. But Coleman um, isn't the player that's going to put up 20 points. He's the player that's going to get the rebounds, get the blocks, get the steals. Um, exactly. That's what he does. And that's where, he, and, you know, if he can hit a few threes along the way, great. Um, but yes, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you. I think that uh, I think the other two have been pretty much secured themselves as Batman and Robin. Um, so Coleman, I think, is a pretty good X factor at this point. He's somebody you're really going to need this team to. You're really going to need him to 
step it up here uh, for yeah. them to do much of anything, I think. So a couple of people have mentioned it. There was some back and forth in the comments. Um, you mentioned it earlier. I believe this locks Illinois into two or three. I, I, I think, think so, yes. I, I for sure three seed. <laughs> There was some conversation in the chat that if Illinois wins tomorrow, they could jump to a two. I don't think that happens. No. I think I think they're locked in as a three seed right now. So looking at Lenardi's latest bracket, which was overnight, I believe, or early this morning. Yeah, 1030 this morning. He has Illinois playing the Akron Zips, head coached by... One, Great. John Gross. What was our conversation a couple of weeks ago, Logan? You can't tell me I'm wrong now. If this, if that actually happens, you cannot tell me that my conspiracy theory seating is thought. I stand by what I said. Do you honestly think that the people in that ro- room know that John Gross even coached Il- at Illinois? A million percent. I yes, do, do not. It's a bunch of athletic directors and in, in whatever presidents, and I I just don't think that's something that's even on their radar. Like, Is, can you I look get at the it. committee? Huh? Do we know? Do we know who's on the committee? No, I don't have a clue. I just don't think that's something that even registers to people. And probably CB. I'm sure there's somebody from CBS that's in there pulling strings and whatever. But like I truly, I truly don't think that they're keeping track with every single head coach who's ever coached at every program. Like I, I just, I don't think that's how it works. But okay, here, here's the committee this year. Here's the committee: Charles McClellan, the SWAC commissioner, he's the chairperson. Jamie Pollard, Iowa State athletic director. Scott Barnes, Oregon State athletic director. Bubba Cunningham, North Carolina AD. Mark Coyle, Minnesota AD, Greg Byrne, Alabama AD, Keith Gill, Sunbelt Commissioner. And then you got Butler at, Butler's AD, Sanford's AD, the Big Sky Commissioner, Temple's AD, and Santa Clara's Athletic Director. Unless there is somebody whose job it is, is to research every single intriguing storyline and put it on the team card, which is very possible that they do have that person. But I just don't – I truly, I truly do not think that that's something that those people even re- even registers with them. I really don't. Unless somebody has done all the work to put that in there, if that's somebody from CBS or whatever that's that's putting that to paper. I just – I don't think it's actually – it's, it's on their mind. I just don't. Okay. I, I just don't. Um, I, I don't – I think that's far-fetched in my opinion. But some, some of those matchups, other... sure. But John Gross with – Versus Illinois, I just don't think that's something that they care about. The other 14 seeds on the bracket, Moorhead State, Oakland, who Illinois played this year, and Colgate, who Illinois played this year. So if those are the 14 seeds, Illinois is going to get either Akron or Moorhead State because I don't think they would – I don't think – I don't know if right. that's a written rule that you can't play someone in the first round that you played, but I don't think they would do that. Uh, so either Moorhead or Akron. According to Joe, Joe Lenardi – I don't know that he's the most reliable bracketologist anymore because there's a lot of people out there, but um, I think he was That's the first. That's what bracket, and, bracket matrix has too, is, is those same four. Yeah. Once it gets down to those teams, I think it's easier to seed the yeah. like the, thir- the 13 to 16 seeds. So that's where we're looking at right now. Um, as of this morning, he had Illinois 11th overall as the three seed, 10th Creighton. I don't know that Illinois jumps Creighton or Baylor. Um, they both lost last night, so I don't know <laughs> if this win bumps them up over them. But to get to a to get to a two seed, they'd have to jump Creighton, Baylor, and Iowa State or Marquette. And I yeah, I don't happening. think that's happening. So I'm pretty sure a three seed is locked in, which which is great. Um, I think at this point the biggest question will be where they go. Yeah. Uh, Indianapolis will be out of the question, um, which means your next closest is Pittsburgh. Yeah, I've seen I some guess. Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh or Omaha, whatever's closer. Um, is the Spokane talk put to bed? Yeah, at this point, yeah. Spokane was really only if – 
there's nobody in the Northwest that's even a top is that's in the top 16. So yeah. like Spokane, whoever gets stuck in Spokane is going to be literally the, the 15th and 16th best teams. Like, that's who's going to get stuck there. Um, as far as that stuff goes. So I don't think Spokane was an option. I think at this point you're probably looking at Pittsburgh or Omaha. Um, let me look at the seat locations again. Um, I've been doing this for a while, but I haven't looked at it in a few days. So I'm kind of a little, uh, let's see Brooklyn, Charlotte, Indianapolis. It won't be Indy. Omaha, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think it'll be Omaha or Pittsburgh. Maybe maybe Memphis, I guess. Um, but I think if I'm just looking at – if I'm just kind of big-braining this here real quickly, UConn will go to Brooklyn. Houston will go to Memphis. Purdue will go to Indy. North Carolina goes to Charlotte. Can they even technically go to Charlotte? I assume. Um, Tennessee probably goes to Charlotte. Arizona goes to Salt Lake. Marquette goes to Indy. Iowa State goes to Omaha. Um, Baylor's probably Baylor probably stays ahead of Illinois. So they will probably go to Salt Lake, I guess. Um, Creighton can't go to Omaha. Um, I'm going to guess it's Omaha or Pittsburgh would be your, is your location. Which Pittsburgh was, uh, Pittsburgh a couple was years Houston, ago, I think. Right. Year we lost to what? Houston. The year we lost to Houston. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember that one. All right. Um I anything else, Illinois or selection show? No. Brackets? No. Um yeah, I think they're I think they've There's... pretty much secured a three. I don't think they go any yeah. higher. I, I at this point I don't think that I don't think the outcome tomorrow matters to the committee. Uh usually doesn't. I think yeah. Illinois is pretty locked into their seed. Um I guess Wisconsin may play themselves up a little bit, but uh, as far as Illinois is concerned, I think they're probably on the three line and they're probably going to Pittsburgh is my guess. So just uh, Wisconsin, who you, who you see there. bracket matrix has Wisconsin as a six um, after today could go up to a five. I would assume. I think a five um, is definitely in play for Wisconsin. The sixes, according to bracket matrix, uh, Wisconsin, Utah state, St. Mary's Clemson, uh, Lenardi has Texas Tech as a six. I've seen South Carolina on the six line in some places. Yeah. I've seen Nevada there. Um, Florida, Lenardi has Florida there, but they won today, so they could go up to a five. I hope they do because Florida scares me. Um, honestly, I'm more scared of the six seeds than I am the five seeds. Yeah. So as far as them. matchup, yeah. Yeah, some of them. St. Mary scares me. Clemson does not. Utah State does not. Texas Tech scares me. South Carolina does not. I don't want Florida BYU. scares me. You don't, don't want BYU. BYU? No. I haven't seen a lot of BYU. I don't they didn't, BYU. but until you said that. So, there's that. Um, other scores. Obviously, we told you Wisconsin beat Purdue. So it's Illinois, Wisconsin. Um, SEC championship tomorrow is Auburn and Florida. Um, what are the championships tonight? Big, Big 12, East is right now. ACC and Big East. Big, e- Big East is right now. Marquette and UConn. That one's really early. Halftime. Iowa State is up on Houston, uh, thirty to twenty-three. I think both of their seeds are locked in. Houston will be a one. Iowa State will be a two. Uh, Marquette same. U- UConn will be a one. Marquette will be a two. Um, the Mountain West final is right now as well. New Mexico is beating leading San Diego State. Uh, and then ACC tonight, NC State and North Carolina. There's still a couple bid stealers out there. Um, if NC State wins, that's a bid stolen. If Oregon wins, that's a bid stolen. So those living on the bubble um, are rooting for North Carolina and Colorado tonight um, to avoid some some uh, bids being taken away. Anything else? No. No, I think that okay. covers everything. This was fun. Uh, For tomorrow. Should... Yes, go ahead. We will do a post-selection show. Show. <laughs> post-selection show. 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 Um, because the Big Ten title game leads right into selection show, we will wait until the bracket is revealed. We'll come on here. We might not even talk about the Illinois game because – I mean, we'll we'll probably acknowledge the results, but we'll more so break down the bracket and um, what we're seeing initially. So that'll be 
What time's the game tomorrow? I don't even know. Is it three? Three thirty. Three thirty. Okay. So selection shows probably at six. Six. Yeah. Yeah. So probably six thirty. Between six thirty and seven, we'll hop on here with a uh, look at the brackets um, and talk through what we see. Um, so no post game show, but we will do a selection show breakdown tomorrow after we see the bracket. Anything else? No, sir. All right. Um, I Send believe me it's home. only Illinois' second Big Ten tourney finals appearance since 2005. I would assume so. Sure. 2021 when we won no. it. And now this one. Did we go no. to the finals at all? Yeah, there was the year that I went over with my dad. The year. Uh, oh, yeah. 2008. Yeah, they, they were bad. The Warren Carter. Team. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. That's the only time I've been to a Big Ten tournament game was that championship. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lucky you. You've been to some good ones. I was just talking <laughs> before the game yesterday in the group chat. Uh, no, it wasn't yesterday. It was like Wednesday. We were all trying to watch uh, on Peacock, obviously. And we were like, man, five years ago, we were playing in these games. I was like, yeah, I was freaking front row for uh, Illinois, Iowa, the 13 12 game in New York City. It was fun, New York City, but it was, yeah, it's awful. Awful point in those. But yeah, yeah we'll be back. Some, uh, you've been to some dandies. Yeah, I've covered some awful Illinois basketball. So it's fun to enjoy it as a fan. We'll be back tomorrow about 6, 630 Eastern after the selection show and break down your brackets. Um, for those little tidbit on filling out your bracket, no team has won the championship that did not at least make the semifinals of their conference tournament. So take that when you're filling out your brackets. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. For Logan, I'm Craig. Go Illini.